Hello and welcome on ST Michael Tronics booth here on Embedded World 2023. My name is Roman and as every year I'm very happy to give you a booth tour with our dear friend Charbax. So are you wondering what are the great news we are having here this year? Let's check it out together. Nice. As you can see the booth is pretty busy. It's first day, it is in peak. I can tell you yesterday during Wednesday it was fully packed, crowded. And that's great because uh, this is what we were looking for, to have our customers, partners with us. Because we have a lot of new things that we have introduced recently in the beginning of 2023. Maybe some of you have been uh, watching our STM32 Innovation Live event which happened last week. And at that event we have introduced three brand new STM32 series. And the great thing is they are not only introduced, but they are here, they are available and everybody can start using them. One of them is uh, our new entry-level STM32. It's called STM32C0. It's an extension of the existing STM32G0 and the main benefit for customers is to bring 32-bit microcontroller to the price tag of today 8 and 16-bit devices. So customer does not have to ever wonder anymore shall I use 8-bit, 16-bit, you can go straight forward to the 32-bit and have the freedom and flexibility to start with C0 from 8-pin package, 16 kilobyte of flash going up. So I see my colleagues are busy but maybe you can ask them some questions about the C0 if you might. So Simon and Loran are our two colleagues here about Hi. the C0. So guys tell us something, what is the special about the C0? So the C0 is the new entry-level um, family. So the goal is to uh, be and compete the, the STM uh, the 16 and 8-bit uh, microcontroller while having a faster um, faster uh, CPU uh, with up-to-date peripherals, uh, more accurate and faster um, ADC. So we've, you will find two dice, both. Uh, um, 32K uh, flash memory inside and both share the same peripheral. The only difference is the RAM size. So the C031 is 12K and the C011 is 6K. Inside you will find what, uh, the basic, basic stuff that you need for the application. So I2C, SPI, uh, USART, you will find plenty of timer. You can do even motor control with the, with the timer. So it's a very nice feature, the uh, MCU. Yes. Thank so you, you have also DMA. Uh... Perfect. Uh, DMA is one of the great advantages of this yeah. MCU comparing to 8-bit because today on 8-bit you rarely find this. So yeah, thank you, Simon. Thanks. And as you have seen, you have we have also two new discovery kits, which are very easy to use. They are compatible with the Arduino platform. So uh, really, we are ready full speed for you to start working with these what devices. Is a good price for the discovery kits? People yes. So of course we, we we keep the price so it's affordable. Um, okay, it's I don't know the exact price, but it's definitely below 20 US dollars. So. Yes. Both are around 10, and this one is 70. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thank okay. So that's the C0. It's there. Everybody can start using it. We are distributing a lot of boards. In fact, for the C0, we are supporting our customers here during the three days of the show with 1,000 nuclear boards. So now we should have 1,000 people already starting the development. So uh, people, students, everybody can just queue up and they exactly, can talk with you exactly. and they get one. Correct, correct. That's cool. So C0 is one of the first news. The next one, because I promised you we have introduced many new stuff, is the STM32 H5. So, so the letter H is really a new thing within STM32 because so far we had F, G, L, U, and now we have H5. So what is H5? H5 is more targeting or positioning inside the mid-range of our microcontroller portfolio. You can see it as a kind of alternative to the existing devices like STM32F4. It brings uh, new peripheries like I3C. So yes, not I2C, but I3C, which is the extension of I2C, bringing uh, possibilities of dynamic addressing, uh, low power modes uh, management, and many more. All right, so we can try to get this like very busy b at, the, at this area, uh, talking about this stuff. So it's uh, one of the most busiest spots. It's not only because it's here at the entrance, but uh, 
the device is very interesting. Today the devices like F2 and F4 are one of the mostly used devices from STM32 portfolio. They can cover a variety of different applications, that's why the H5 is so much interesting. Nice. And it's not only the i3C, that is Ethernet enabled. Uh, we have improved a lot the security offering on this device because the security is becoming more and more important. And this is the first MCU which is certified for PSA level 3. Nice. And uh, basically they have conversations going on right here and showing it off and uh, all these different boards right here. Exactly. So after the very, no, very well known Nucleos, we have as well the Discovery Kit. The nuclear boards are available and so as for the C0 we are distributing them here for uh, interested customers, students or geeks, makers of STM42. <laughs> and that's right there. Exactly. And the discovery kit which you can see here is not yet fully available but it will become available during the first half of this year. This is a little display. There is a little display, there is an Ethernet port, there is a support for USB type C. So on this exact demo we are demonstrating the USB Type-C dual roll device. So it means that the, the USB port can act as a source or as a sink and they can change the roll dynamically in between depending on the application use case. Nice. It's a big start at the booth here. Oh yes, oh yes. H5 is our new start, definitely. And when you launch something like this, long-term support, huh? Yeah, very important question, of course. So the longevity uh, commitment around STM32 family is there. Uh, we have uh, what we call 10 years longevity. It means when we launch the product, it's 10 years. But for sure, for many of our customers, 10 years is not enough. And uh, that's why we are prolonging this 10 years periodically. And a very good example is the first STM32 F1, which has been released back in 2007. So today, in 2023, it's 15, 16 years since we are producing it. And still today, we guarantee the next 10 years. So uh, people can be really secured and not afraid of uh, using these devices. And it's valid for all the families. And uh, that's great, that's important for you guys. And when you develop something for one platform, you might be more or less easily able to port it over to the next Correct. future products. That's true, so for example, the stm 32 h 5 is based on Cortex-M33 core, which we have introduced together with the U5 family back in uh, 2021. And uh, so this is the, the common thing. Then it shares uh, the same or similar security profile that we are trying to introduce on all our new devices. Uh, so you will see it also later on with the new STM32 MP13. Nice. And moreover, I told you, it's an alternative to F4 devices and it's fully pin-to-pin -pin compatible with the F4 line. Okay. Cool. So then speaking about the U5, uh, uh, basically, as I said, the U5 has been introduced in 2021, but yeah. now we have enlarged the family because we want to have the U5 really covering a big scale of, of applications. So today the U5 is being scalable from 64 kilobyte of flash up to 4 megabyte of flash. And not only 4 megabyte of flash, but as well 2.5 megabyte of SRAM, which is great because Engineers, they are always hungry for more SRAM. And for applications like graphics, for example, where you want to drive a display, you need a frame buffer to prepare your images and then push them to the display. And there is a very cool demo here. That hopefully, we will be able to show you as well. So what happened on this demo? Yeah, on this demo, we have a rounded display. So, of course, not all the applications today have a rounded display, but it's a very nice demonstration. <laughs> and on this device, as I said, there is a big RAM, so we can host all the frame buffers inside. And moreover, to support the graphics, we have the inbuilt new graphical accelerator called Neochrome. Yes, exactly. So and maybe Jan can tell a little bit more. Thank you. It means that uh, now we are, we are using the GPU, so now the vector graphic rotation and computation is done, done mainly, not mainly, but it's done by the, by the hardware. So you can see that the load of the, of the CPU, it's more like nothing, and still we are able to, like, it's very, very smooth uh, movement. Now, we are, if, if we disable this uh, GPU graphic, and now it's uh, handled only by the CPU, you can see how painful it is. And we also like uh, more overload the, the CPU. So this is the main advantage of, of the U5 with this dedicated GPU accelerator. What's Neochrome? 
uh, you cannot be just the naming of this GPU. It's, uh, it's, it's the brand. It's the brand, it's brand. Uh, we, we gave to this uh, graphical accelerator. Maybe some of you know our Chrome Art, which was the previous graphical accelerator. In fact, Chrome Art was a dedicated DMA because at the end, when you are creating graphics, basically you are reshuffling data from A to B because you are uh, taking your assets, for example, from Flash. Then you are building your frame buffer inside the RAM and then you are moving this frame buffer to the display. And all these are basically only manipulation. But the Chrome R was already able to make some extra functions on this manipulation, like uh, alpha blending operations, etc. But this new Neo Chrome is uh, really supporting full vector graphics. So you can implement not only simple graphics, but full vector graphics. And as you, can, as you have seen from the demo with Jan, the GPU load is helping a lot to reduce the CPU load. So you can do graphics which up to now were more in the range of uh, high and expensive microprocessors. Now you can do it on a simple microcontroller. It used to be on the on the like the Cortex A stuff. Exactly. On the MP1 maybe. Absolutely. So really to implement this type of graphics with the movements, with the vector support, you can imagine like a navigation. Today we have a lot of customers doing e-bikes or some sport equipment where you want to have a navigation and then the display of the maps is vectorized. So with this device you can do it with minimum CPU load as you have seen on the demo. And low power consumption for all this stuff. On top, the U5 is keeping the continuity of our low, of our low power technology. So you have a good support of the dynamic consumption as well as many low power modes. And we also keep the famous LP BAM feature so LPBAM has been introduced also with the U5 back in 2021 and it's a possibility to chain series of operations between peripheries and memories without the need of waking up the CPU. So you can be in a stop mode while the timer is triggering ADC, ADC is moving data to RAM, then these data are taken and pushed to the UR to send them to outside world. Cool, all right. So that's the U5 extension. Uh, moving on uh, around our booth, uh, oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, we are moving from the new MCUs to uh, connectivity. Because connectivity, of course, is a big thing. Uh, everyone today wants to be connected somehow, wired or wireless. And, uh, and a big, big thing today, uh, which everyone wants to hear and talk about, is matter. And Vito, maybe if you could help us to show us what are we showing today and how we are progressing with the implementation of Matter on our devices. So hello everyone. So, uh, what we are demonstrating here is our first integration of the Matter stack uh, to be running on our STM32WB55 device. Okay, so we have a few weeks ago, we published uh, on GitHub uh, on STM32 hotspot uh, the projects for STM32WB55 and we are simply running the projects here. Okay, so. It's a very simple lighting application, uh, and we have here two setups. So we have a border rotor uh, with our RCP, again running on stm 32 wb so which works as a meta gateway. Uh, and uh, we have two end devices uh, connected to the track network, which is uh, created by this border rotor, okay, by the same gateway. And we can control the two end devices running the light and application from the smartphone using the chip tool APK. So again, something that everyone can download from GitHub. So this is like the development setup. So where you have everything under control, you can see what is happening. You can start to explore matter. And we have here, let's say, more, I would say, already something that is closer to what could be put on the market. So we have a Google Nest Hub uh, with the uh, uh, running uh, the firmware that is already available. Some the device that you can already buy, uh, it's supporting uh, Matter and is supporting uh, the thread is running the board router for thread, okay? And we can also control our end device, which is basically running almost the same firmware like these devices here, okay? They are just connected to another network and they can be directly controlled from the Google Nest app, okay? So that's something that everyone can already start to play with uh, because the matter is new for everybody, but you see that there are already setups you can easily build at home and you can start to play and explore the solution. Perfect. Thank you, Ed. Great. So you see, Matter is still relatively new, but we are progressing with its uh, implementation. And as we said, customers are today 
they can download on GitHub the X Cube Matter package and start evaluating what is Matter and how it can enable the application to be more interoperable for any smart or smart home or factory smart home systems. Nice. Okay. So, for sure, connectivity is not only Matter. Uh, we are as well demonstrating uh, our complete portfolio of uh, BLE enabled products. Uh, that was the demo around, which is, I think is also quite nice and it would be, would be nice to stop by. So over here we, we are showcasing the mix of variety of products that we have available today for 2.4 GHz, uh, mainly BLE implementation. And maybe Dominic can say a few words about the demo, sure, please. For sure. So here is a, let's say, a wild uh, portfolio we have now in hands for our BLE solution, okay? From low-end to high-end solution, okay? Which one is the low-end? So the low-end are those ones, okay? And you can move to high-end solutions thanks to the STM 32WB series, okay? So where on top of the pure BLE, you can run ZigBee, Thread, and so uh, high-end appealing technologies such as uh, Matter. So, so now we have everything in hands. Uh, Customer just can, let's say, concretely uh, design their own solution, their full solution based on ST portfolio, and on top of this, inheriting of the full ecosystem of uh, STM32 Cube and so on. So no sure. doubt, will success. Cool. Thank you. So thanks, Dominic. Very good. Welcome. Whatever the customer wants to implement, could be a, a simple beacon. Then of course he will go and use the, the low end solution. If he would like to develop a border router, we have seen with Beat. Of course, he will need more performance, more security, then he will probably choose the WB. Okay? All right, so uh, moving along uh, on this demo pod, we are showcasing very interesting technology. Maybe you are aware of uh, It's our 60 gigahertz transceiver which uh, can enable our customers to replace what they are today uh, being implemented by physical connectors. For, so any high speed uh, transitions and transmissions, they can replace it optically through our 60 GHz transceiver. And if maybe Fabrice could help me to a little bit des des describe this demo for you guys. So yes, uh, here in fact what we show is a um, solution to, uh, to remove uh, connectors basically, and to solve the issues with traditional plugs uh, and pins. And what we demonstrate is a contactless uh, one gig Ethernet data communication uh, while the system is rotating. So we display the video stream from this IP camera and we are using one gig Ethernet and we go uh, over uh, this system which is rotating and we display uh, the video stream on, on the PC. Uh, PC. Okay. So uh, typical distance is a couple of centimeters, two centimeters. Uh, and we have another solution doing more or less the same, but with a contactless USB 2, which is more addressing uh, wireless uh, mobile application. And at the end, the final goal is to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, mix with a wireless power technology so that you have a full contactless power and data, which means that you can completely remove the USB 2 plug from the device. You just put your phone on a table. You can recharge it and uh, get a data link, exactly. That's the target. The wireless charger could potentially add this data functionality. Exactly. Data and power to remove all connectors. How close do you need to be for the contact to happen? You, need uh, to touch or not? you can go to the contact, so uh, one, a couple of millimeters, and the maximum is uh, typically uh, 20 millimeters. So basically okay. through the case? Yes. So we can go through any non-metallic material, so plastic, uh, glass, it works, which allows at the end to, to make devices completely sealed, waterproof, dustproof, no more pins which are not uh, reliable at the end. And no chance for file corruption or data no. problems or anything? No. It just works? It works. Right. Same like USB. Exactly, it behaves like a cable, in fact. Imagine you have a USB play cable, you cut it, you put ST60, and you establish a USB uh, connection without any latency. There is no latency with the technology, there is no software stack, there is no pairing, like with Bluetooth or, or Wi-Fi. So it's immediate data transmission because we are using a 60 gigahertz RF transceiver. Uh, USB are talking up to 80 gigabit per second, the, the new spec. Are yes, you, so how, what is the maximum speed? No, this potentially? one is a USB 2, so we sustain up to 480 megabit per second. For now? For now. Could be yes. more in the future? 
It would we need, need another, uh, another version. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it will come, but later. USB okay. 3, we are thinking about it, but not for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Fabrice. So, you got it really in detail. And yes, let's move on. And uh, one of the next new STM32 that we have uh, released uh, still recently, in fact, one week ago, is the extension of our STM32 MP1 series. So after having the MP15, which has been introduced back in 2019, now finally we brought, uh, let's say, the lower, more cost-effective version. It's called MP13, one free. The main difference is uh, it's single A7 core running up to one gigahertz, but it has in the same time two Ethernet ports, and we have improved quite significantly the security features of this device. So this is the latest version of the MP1. Correct. Exactly. So customers today, if they don't need the power and they don't want to pay the higher price tag of uh, MP15 with two A7s, Cortex M4 inside, they could grab and use this MP13. And thanks to its uh, security features, we have also been able to reach uh, very nice PSA level certification levels, which could be very interesting for point of sales type of applications, but not only. Do you show it here, the MP13? Yes, you can see it already here on right the there? demo. Let's check it out. Yes, because it's a nice demo. So what do we see here? Yes. So over here we have the MP13 board, which is being connected to two drivers, uh, thanks to the two Ethernet uh, ports. And in the same time, it is processing uh, a data from a camera here on the top. The camera is sensing the ball and is giving the instructions to the MP1, which is uh, then manipulating with this platform to bring the ball from start to the finish. That's one of the automatic modes of this game, we call it the maze game, but it's to demonstrate the performance capabilities, the connectivity of this device. Nice. That has a lot of potential. Absolutely, yes, definitely. So another application example of implementing this MP13 is this uh, interesting rover we had decided to show it more statically because otherwise it would take a lot of space. But this, this guy, this animal, how to say, is full of ST components. So including the MP13 for being the overall brain of this device. Again, having the, the drivers for the motors, uh, having the, the, let's say, the environment for uh, controlling the, the arm and the camera. So it's a nice example of how our components can be used to develop such a robot. Cool. Yeah. For automation, potentially. Exactly. So the MP, the MP series is targeting industrial automation customers. Uh, it goes uh, up to the industrial temperature range. So it's not device only for consumer applications. It's really industrial device. Cool. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what I can say, and it's not no more a secret, on this device we will also this year uh, release uh, support for a real-time operating system. So for customers which would like to benefit from the power of A7 core up to 1 GHz and the set of peripheries, but they don't want to go with Linux for whatever reasons, they will have the alternative to use real-time operating system as well. Wow, okay. cool. Great. Okay, lots of stuff. Where are we going lots next? Lots of stuff, yes. So on this, on this board, uh, we are focusing on our graphical offering. So we have seen already the U5 with the rounded display, you remember. Uh, and maybe if you look on this nice wall, here we have a series of implementations uh, for our customers that are implementing uh, graphical user interfaces, so the GUIs. And uh, it's really mixed, starting with um, our MPU products, the MP15 or the STM32H7 high-end uh, microcontroller down to some more simple devices like, for example, even implementing the graphics with stm 2 wl is possible. Okay, now we are not displaying anything, but normally there is a gateway communicating with this end device and displaying the end graphics. So these solutions are completing the, the offering we have for you, for our customers, when uh, looking after implementing uh, graphical user interfaces. Nice. That's a big, big wall of graphical yes, user total, interfaces. Yes, in total we have, uh, let's say, 14 different solutions, so it's, uh, it's great and give a lot of flexibility to our customers. So many partners, you have to realize on these UIs. 
Exactly, and I think that's the beauty because at the end, me as a customer, for example, I can choose what solution is the best fitting to my needs. Uh, do I want to use C? Do I want to use C++? Do I want to use a commercial solution with full support? Do I want to use open, open source solution? So you have all the flexibility in your hands. All right. And that was always the mindset and the mentality we had inside the STM32 ecosystem to offer our customers a lot of flexibility and a lot of options how to realize their final products and final applications. Nice. Okay. I mentioned to you that with the H5 and MP13 we have uh, increased a lot the security offering and I think it's worth to bring you to, to this side of our bot where we are explaining to our customers what is the journey when they need to implement certain level of security. Because today security, as we said, becoming more and more important. Uh, we have to be sure that all the connected devices cannot be hacked and uh, we work not only on the silicon level like the H5 which has a lot of features not only the cryptography engine but possibilities to to store securely the keys uh, and then in order to be able to help our customers to implement these security features we are releasing a tool which is called secure manager and I hope one of my colleagues uh, could maybe tell you more. As you can see, they are all busy. But in, the, in fact, this thing will allow, allow our customers to implement from secure boot up to secure communication or storing of, a, of a, let's say confidential information in easy way without the need of studying a lot of documentation, but do it in a graphical user way. Maybe I can just go and listen what he's talking yes. about. Sorry, I put the camera. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me jump in. Yes, sorry. With the remote attack, there is no way uh, to uh, have access to the to your assets, to 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 your uh, to your secrets. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we need to, so we need to come back when they have time, the, just after. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. One of the implementation of these security features is, as I said, for the connectivity. And on this uh, demo pod, for example, we are demonstrating the STM32 H5 and its features, enabling our customers to make a secure connection to a cloud. And maybe Jeff can tell you more. Yep, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to bypass the two in the screen, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's check it out right here. Switch you over so to what do we side. see? Uh, secure, AWS, IoT. Uh, so what are you showing here? Right. So what we have here is the new device, which is the H5. Um, the newest feature inside this device is our ability to pre-provision the chip at factory level, so ST's factory level, with a key pair and a certificate. So that means when you want to do your cloud connectivity, all you do is register the ST root certificate in your cloud account. And when you connect your device through the TLS connection, you will be able to um, authenticate the device certificate with the root certificate that's inside the uh, generic root certificate ST. So you put the security at the factory Correct. when you tape out each chip? Yes. How is that possible? Not sure of the full processing technologies in the factory yet. Of course. So, well, I think here we are really leveraging uh, our um, experience we have uh, from our secure microcontrollers. So ST is also producing devices for bank cards uh, and payment terminals where the level of the security is the highest. And uh, inside the company, we, we connect the right experts together because we have a feeling and we have a feedback from you that the same level or near the same level of security features are needed on the day-to-day -day applications today. All right. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So, okay. thank you, Jeff. Yep, no problem. Thanks. Okay. Basically, moving on, uh, we have a similar implementation. In at that, at that case, it was implementation with AWS from Amazon. Here we have similar implementation with uh, Microsoft Azure, because these are the two biggest platforms today we have uh, from our customers. Then, moving on along our booth, uh, it would be quite nice to say a few words about uh, what could be very interesting for every user who would like to start or is already maybe working with STM32 and is wondering where to start, which micro to choose, which board can support me, 
which software exists. And for that, we have created and upgraded this year what we call STM to the developer zone. And we will try to reach the place. Yeah. So maybe let's go around. Let's go around. <laughs> It'll be faster. Right. And basically here on this developer zone, as I said, we are trying to help our customers to start working and evaluating our STM32 tools in a quick way. And maybe Amel can tell us a little bit more about it. Hello. Here I'm presenting the STM32 developer zone. So the STM32 developer zone is part of the STM32 uh, the, the st.com website. How to go to the STM32 developer zone? We, we are at st.com website. We click on STM32 developer zone. We have two main entry points, one for MCUs, another one for MPUs. Let's go to the STM32 MCU developer zone. What will, uh, what will we find there? First of all, for someone who would like to develop based on the STM32 products, what has uh, this person has to do? First thing is to select the suitable microcontrollers or the boards from ST portfolio. So let's, for example, look for a suitable microcontroller. We will find a selector. We may uh, do some filtering here to select the suitable Micro, microcontroller, for example, uh, let's look for the ones that are based on Cortex M33. We can also do some more filtering and fine tune our choice, but let's see now the ones that are based on M33. This is the list of the products which are based on M33. So you already have a, a bunch. Yes, yeah, so overall, basically, today, the SGM32 portfolio of microcontrollers, you can find nearly 4,000 different part numbers. So oh. it's not, uh, sometimes it's almost a headache to select the right one, right, even for us. But from the opposite, the, 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 the cool thing, again, for customers is they have a possibility to find the best fitting product in terms of features and price tag for their application. And we realized this with so many part numbers and there was a good motivation for us to create and release this developer zone. So what Amel shows you was really the entry point just to select the product. Then maybe you are wondering which board can be used to start working with this product and that's yes. what also the developer zone can show me. Yes, right? exactly. You, uh, if I click here, I can check what are the boards that can be used by someone who uh, would like to develop on the SEM32 products, he can select either a Nucleo board or Discovery or more advanced one, which is the evaluation board. Once the hardware is selected, now we uh, want to, to set up the ecosystem or the tools that can help us in order to develop. We are providing here a shortcut to the, all the STM32 uh, related tools that can help us to, to develop our uh, application. The first one is the STM32 CubeMX for the configuration and then we'll need to compile and update our application and debug it. There are uh, several tool chains that can be selected. First one is the free one provided by ST, which is the SEM32 Cube IDE. You can also select one of uh, uh, the IDEs provided by our partners. You have also to you, you have also the possibility to go further while using the Cube programmer and uh, some other checking capability with this tool. And you can also monitor your application if you select to use the STM32 Cube Monitor. So these are the tools that you will need in order to develop your application. And the good point here is that you have all of them on the same entry point, which is the developer zone. Besides to this, at the developer zone, we are promoting the uh, latest or the main solutions that are uh, provided to, to SE, but 
Before moving to this, we have the embedded firmware package. When you are using our tools, you will, uh, the pack uh, you will need to use uh, these packages, which we, uh, will be called uh, later. So, for each product, we have a dedicated package, and we have also some expansion package. We have other solutions based on Azure Airtos, and many important points here from this entry point, you can go to GitHub, visit our repository and check the examples that we have and the, all the packages that you may use for our products. Nice. So even at ST, you have to use this tool to find, well, find okay, everything. It was a kind of uh, expression, yes, especially for the MCU section, but working with the customer, listening to the customer needs, uh, it's, uh, it's the easiest way to do it, uh, to use it this way. So thanks a lot, Amel. Uh, Welcome. And let's see, I give us a feedback. If you like this tool, of course, you can comment and send us a feedback about... And everybody can just go check it out right now. Exactly, it's there, it's online. And your feedback is important because this is the only way we can keep improving and adding new features and functionalities into it. So maybe before closing, okay, maybe we could spend also a few words uh, here. And maybe, Chris, Christoph, could you say a few words uh, to our customers? how the new Estilink V3 power will help them with the development. Yes, uh, the new uh, SV3 power um, is a combination of the Estilink V3 uh, debugger plus uh, current profiling. So you can measure the current uh, consumed by your board uh, in all uh, range, running, uh, stop mode, standby and so on. Uh, the, f the main features are uh, it can uh, measure current from 1 nano amp to uh, 500 uh, milliamp and uh, you can use it with uh, our cube monitor power uh, tool and also uh, we can um, have the synchronization of the code and the power uh, measurement in, uh, in So ideas. people can, can understand how much power your Exactly. Your devices use so they can they can measure really from uh, nano amps to two milliamps the consumption of the device, uh, and uh, the, the the good thing of uh, the complete offering is that with the Estilink V3 power, you can also understand the related consumption to the code execution. So you can really synchronize the processing of the instructions with the with the final consumption, and this can help the customers to to focus on where the main consumption is coming from and optimize it there to focus on a specific point and not to search from their uh, big uh, projects. All the way down to nano amps. Correct. So you really have control. Because today uh, every, every milliwatt counts, right? And applications, we want to have our customers developing applications which are greener, which are consuming less. The energy efficiency is very important element together with the security and connectivity we already discussed. Nice. Well, okay, let's uh, maybe check some of the end, end product examples of how ST components and ST technology can be used in the, in the final applications. And we have a little corner, you can see it is a corner like maybe close to your home because I believe all of us are having a washing machine or a robotic cleaner these days. What we are demonstrating here is uh, implementation of a washing machine and using our STM32 and AI technology, so neural network processing, to measure the load of the clothes inside the washing machine. And the great thing is that without a sensors, you can measure the weight inside the washing machine with the resolution down to 100 grams. And again, this will enable the producers of the washing machines, for example, to make their algorithms more efficient, consume less energy, and maybe, why not, also wash your clothes faster, which I'm always having a problem with. How is it possible to measure so precisely? Well, again, it's, a, it's a thanks to the sensors that we have from ST and the, the possibility to implement the AI Nano Edge uh, Studio and its uh, working models inside the STM32, which is powerful enough to make it happen. So future washing machines will be better and consume less. Exactly. Water and everything. Exactly. The efficiency is important. Another application is the robot cleaner. Uh, maybe Bertrand, Bertrand, could you, could you help us? 
maybe? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the, the nice application of the yes. robot cleaner? Yes. Hey. Okay, hello. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I think what we, what we have done here with this uh, vacuum cleaner, so we're uh, integrating a neural network uh, inside a standard microcontroller. So we have a STM32 F4, and uh, we're, what we did, we use a zoo model, you know, you can find on, on the web, and, uh, and thanks to a, a time of flight sensors, we're uh, capturing, you know, the, uh, the, the information, putting the information within the neural network, and uh, uh, thanks to the QBI, which is a tool uh, from our um, ecosystem, uh, we are converting this neural network uh, within the C code, uh, which is uh, running on the STM32 in this case. Nice. Yeah. So smarter vacuum cleaners, robots. Yes, exactly. So in this case, you are able to, to detect uh, uh, the kind of the, uh, the the floor you have, and you can start. You know, you can wash it with some water or not. You know, based on that. So this is only one of example. But the coolest things is uh, yes. Uh, to have an AI on the standard STM32. Nice. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bertrand. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, talking about uh, sensing, uh, I think it would be also nice to to check what our colleagues from uh, our sensing division have uh, prepared for us. Uh, and uh, let me bring you to this demo pod uh, where our colleagues are showing new smart power sensing solutions and sorry to interrupt you but uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about the new products and the implementation that you are showcasing to our customers these days yeah. yes. okay Hi. hello so uh, this is uh, our new digital power monitoring device it has two integrated channels with 16 bit adc one is dedicated for current, the other one for the voltage up to 60 volts. And then the digital uh, signal is transmitted to the microcontroller in I2C, but also in I3C. So I3C is a new MIPI uh, bus interface, and uh, it's, communicated, it's communicating here with uh, the new STM32H5 device, which is an I3C controller. And we can send also alerts to the microcontroller if we are running over current, under current, voltage and uh, temperature. There's a lot of benefits to be precise with the power and how you you monitor oh, it? Oh yes, sure, sure, sure. This is really a device to monitor the, the battery, uh, battery, 30 volt batteries, for example, home automation or home automation for uh, home appliances, for power tools. And it's for sure, it's very beneficial to have a good accuracy on the power measurement, for sure, for great monitoring. Cool, thanks a lot. Perfect, great. Okay. Thank you, thank thanks you a lot. Much. And uh, let's move on very quickly to our next spot, uh, link again to sensors, and I let uh, Zuska to tell you a little bit more what she's showing here. So hello everyone, here we are showing our consumer grade motion sensors, the new ones. The first one we have on the left side is called LSM6 DSO 16 is It is a IMU with integrated risk core inside the sensor. So we are able to run our custom C language algorithms thanks to ISP toolchain and how we that's why we can compile it. So, and in this demo, we are showing here how we can run unsupervised learning for fitness tracking. The second demo here is uh, using uh, IMU again, and it is called LSM6 DSV16X. It does not have a core like the first one had, but the special thing about this one is that it has embedded hardware sensor fusion. So in this demo, we are using it as a game controller, so with the orientation of the, of the controller, we are able to control the main character in the game, for example. So we can go through the, uh, through the checkpoints and get them with, uh, with the sensor fusion. Nice. Yeah. Sensor fusion is, is nice to have. Exactly. exactly. You can implement a lot of applications. So you see we are also doing some exercising here on the booth <laughs> All right. to keep us in a good shape. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Zuzka. Thank you. And let's thank move you. on to Vladimir, which uh, will tell us a little bit more about a few more sensors that we have. Perfect. Hi. Please come here. Hello. Hi. Okay, so uh, you are in the industrial sensors area. 
and we will talk about condition monitoring of mechanical elements. So in this demo, we are spinning this motor. And as you can see here on the board, there is a intelligent sensor processing unit based accelerometer and gyroscope. And what we are doing here, we are detecting some anomalies in the behavior of the motor. So for example, if I apply magnetic uh, unbalance shaft for the rotation of the wheel, you can immediately see here on the screen that there is uh, anomaly detected by the ISPU. Uh, what you can see here is that there, there are applied uh, some, uh, let's say, noise uh, amplitudes in the signal from the microphone, which is available here on this board. And we are in this case capable to sense, in addition to the accelerometer, also the audio problems in the mechanical system. So it can be, for instance, detection of a bearing problem or high uh, lay rotating machines. What I can show you also here is uh, how uh, the microphone is working. So what we have here in the demo is, uh, let's say possibility to generate uh, ultrasound with a MEMS uh, with uh, a speaker. So if I press the button here, here on the board, the ultrasonic microphone is sending the audio signal from the speaker. And you can see this peak in the frequency spectrum coming, let's say, from the speaker, which is, let's say, simulating some problem from the motor. So that's basically th this. Uh, and ST has full solutions to cover the condition monitoring applications of the mechanical systems. Cool, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vladimir. And I think with these guys, uh, I believe um, we can close here. You can see we have many more things uh, that we are showcasing, but there's not enough time to tell you about everything. But for sure, you can always check our latest news on our ST.com, contact uh, your ST colleagues, uh, contact us through the community forums, and we will be very happy to interact with you. And you do other events and webinars and all kinds of stuff? Yes, definitely. So um, in the beginning, we, we went through the new uh, STM32 series. And uh, for example, right now, you can already register for a free workshop uh, to discover how the STM32 C0 is simple and how easy it is to use it. Uh, it's a three hours online workshop, so you don't have to come personally. Um, and all the attendees from Europe, and here we have to be localized, uh, specific, sorry for this, will receive from us at the end of the workshop free C0 nuclear board. And we will do the same for the H5. The registration for the H5 workshops is not yet open, uh, but we will uh, open it uh, during the next uh, two or three weeks, and the plan is to have first workshop sessions starting in the beginning of May. Nice. So this was an awesome embedded world, maybe the best ever. Yeah, I think we are rising the bar year by year, and uh, that's good because uh, there is always something new, something uh, more to bring. Uh, we have received a lot of positive feedback from customers arriving, and we hope to meet you in all the other shows or events, workshops, uh, all along the year. So thanks for watching, and stay connected to ST. Thank you.